Hiya. Today I'm just going to talk about some of the garden tools you use. Now one of the most important ones is hoes. Now this is a small onion hoe. You can get them a lot bigger but for this little um, video I think I'm going to stick to a small one because they've got long shafts on them and they're a bit clumsy to swing around. This is one I made myself. They're not high tech pieces of kit. Um, if you haven't got uh, an onion hoe look out for one car boot sale second hand shops anywhere but just make sure it's a good solid one don't buy one of these flimsy 50p ones from the supermarkets because it won't last you and it's just a pain to use this one needs a sharp edge on it they all need a sharp edge on it hose you take through the soil they get stones they cut weeds this one you use in a sort of chopping action really um, the reason why they call it onion hose is because onions are so difficult to hoe around without chopping them all off. So I make a little one like this. And I think I'll knock this up in a few minutes. So they're not rocket science, but there again I can weld. Okay, so you've got the blade on it. I like to, to file this part of the blade. You can quite easily see when you're looking at your hoe which end needs to be sharpened, front or back. It'll be partially done already. They're not that sharp. It doesn't need to be that sharp. All I'm doing at the minute is taking the rust off and some of the mud off because I'm not very good at cleaning it. And also when you do something like this, you're looking for high points as well. Because if you've got any high points on them, you may need to take a file to it. And so any high points, just wipe them off. I'd usually put this in a vise, but you'll have a trick trouble seeing it, so I just do it like that. Now, as you can see, if I bring up the blade really close, you can see I'm actually starting to take some of the rust off that side. That's because as you use it, there's always an amount of steel that seems to mold itself round, turn it round. These aren't hardened, they should be soft steel. Um, it allows you to sharpen them a lot better. Hose are one thing you don't need to get stainless steel ones off. If you've got one, that's great, but they don't really need to be stainless steel. Stainless steel garden tools are, are perfect if you've got clay soil and you're using it on wet soil, but you should never be using a hoe, a hoe in wet on wet soil. And we've still got quite a bit to go on this, but excuse me while I have a go on it. As you see, I could use that thing there. However, not everybody has a grind wheel, so I'll be old school on this. There you go. That's taken off me high edges. Funny enough, the edges seem to be higher than any other bit on them. Now, it's nice and sharp. I like to keep my tools sharp. Because it's every time you use a blunt tool, you're having to push it twice as hard as a sharp one. And um, you can get half as much done. So, I would normally stick it in a vise, but that's all you need to do. A nice flat file, nice circular action. You know when it's cutting steel, you can feel it cutting into the steel. Because if you do it one way on a file, nothing happens because you're going down the ridges. Whereas the ridges want to go across. And never do it like that. Otherwise you end up with an uneven edge. What you're trying to do is make it all roughly the same. They work best when they're flat. And that is really about all you do to it. And then quite often what I like is to rub a bit of oil on it and uh, that stops the rust from coming back. So instead of a bit of oil, which would be the obvious answer, Vince wants a bit of grease, which is less obvious, more messy and everything. By the way, you don't have to actually pot a grease like this. You can get tiny little tubes of grease, which are really much more easy to use. And I just like that. Just a tiny bit, nothing too much. You don't have to do the whole blade, just the edge, just where you sharpened it. 
because every time you expose some steel it's going to start to rust it's in a garden shed and the garden shed's going to damp in the air and everything so it will actually corrode it so that's ready now for my onions which we will plant in a few weeks time and uh, as we've got a couple of minutes and we've done hose I've got a lot in my shed actually Ta -da! I'm going to have a look at my potatoes. Now my potatoes, I keep in a plastic box and air in. They look rotten, don't they? Well, I wouldn't want to eat them. But these are just perfect. I've kept the frost off them. I've not let them dry out. They're really working nice. By the way, these aren't extra knobbly ones. These, if you're part of my gardening group, will know a pink flower apple. And I've just kept a box full for next year. I've picked out all the diseased ones and the big trouble uh, what I would love to have put them in is something like this which is perfect for storing your potatoes over winter however the mice got hungry last year and they nibbled through my bag and they munched away at a few of my potatoes I was not best pleased Mr Mouse never got a Christmas card this year I'll tell you so and another thing you saw me do the other day and we dug up our gladioli and here's the gladioli now you can see them they're still a bit damp still a bit old and grotty they're not the, the nicest colour forms I must admit so that's about in the best light I think I can see it. you can see it there they are now all gladioli have these subsidiary bulbs on them uh, sometimes you'll have two or three bulbs on a gladioli sometimes you will have a whole mass of tiny baby bulbs saying that he's looking for a mass of tiny baby there's a subsidiary bulb and it's a second bulb that just grows as a lump on the side you can take that off and put it in and grow it up may not flower this year but Next year you'll get a good flower on it, It'll be the same colour as the one you got. And these, which are the tiny bulbils, you can see, find a nice place in the garden, put them in, they take about two years, and after that you can dig them up and use them as, as gladioli. But you can see, if I were to do that with this one, and I haven't got a clue, I should have labelled what colour this one was, you can see how many bull bills I'm getting off that. There is quite a lot. There's probably about 10 or 15 in that little little load. And those will make 10 or 15 new bulbs. After about a year, you can start to grow. These, I'm yet to put them in a bag. They're still not dried off to my satisfaction. The big problem is if you don't let them dry off, they rot. And uh, the rot will sort of move in and you can see there's some rot moving in on this one here now I need to dry them off it's been too wet to sit them outside or too cold so they'll dry off in my shed nice and slowly and they'll go through for another few months and then I can put them in again just a few I really want some better colours these are a bit boring okay that's me today in my shed it's not raining at the minute, but it has been. So I hope we can get out and do some gardening soon and uh, look at what we can do ready for the spring. So we've done a bit on gardening tools. Anyway, off you go. Get out your shed. Start getting the tools out, get them cleaned off ready. And then lo and behold, you'll be all kitted out for spring. That's Vince here on Igor Rojo signing off.